This is Excel 2016, Module 6, Part 3. In this segment, we will be looking at 3D reference formulas. It's important to remember that sometimes you can get the correct answer to be displayed in a cell in multiple ways. So let's take a look. I mean, if you think about it, if I have a group of cells here, that said the value is 5, 6, and 7, I could use auto sum and get the correct answer of 18. Or I could use a formula that says equal to 5 plus 6 plus 7 and get the same answer and I could also use a formula where I clicked on individual cells and said 5 plus 6 plus 7 by clicking on each individual cell. All three ways I get the same answer. But if on an exam the question said use the sum function to get the correct answer, then this is the only one that is correct. The other two have the correct answer, but did not do the question properly. So it is important to remember that when we get to an exam. The sum function with a 3D reference formula is one of the most missed questions on the exam. And for a lot of students, they do get the correct answer to display in that cell, but they did not use the correct format. So I encourage you to review this multiple times to make sure you know this formula. It must begin with equal sum. You must have a range of worksheets. That's similar to when we created a group of worksheets. You would press on sheet one, hold your shift key down, and press on sheet 4. Then you would click on a single cell reference. And what this formula is going to do, it's going to add the value in that specific cell on all four of those sheets and give you the answer. Okay, so that is what we're going to work on next we're going to go back into our Michigan worksheet. We're going to come over here into the total column. Now clearly we could do an auto sum and sum across the row. But if the question said to use a sum with a 3D reference to calculate this total, you would be marked wrong. Okay, so we're going to start out by typing equals in the word sum and then opening a parenthesis. And I will tell you, do not try to use auto sum with this. It makes it much harder. Okay, so if you just remember, equals sum opening parenthesis. Next, I'm going to click on the first sheet in my group is quarter one. Hold the shift key down and click on the last sheet in the group, quarter four. Notice it created a group of worksheets. Then I am going to create or click, excuse me, on one cell. The cell that I want added on each of those worksheets, which is E6 and I'm going to close the parentheses and then hit the enter key. Now let's do that one more time. Let's 
going to say equals sum open parentheses. Click on quarter one, hold the shift key down, and click on quarter four. Click on the cell that you want added up, in this case E7. Close the parentheses and hit enter. We'll do it one more time and then we'll go ahead and copy it down to the rest. This formula can be copied the same way that these other ones were. The range of worksheets will stay the same and whether or not the cell reference changes will be determined by whether you use absolute or relative referencing. So we'll create it one more time so you can practice equals sum open parentheses. Click on quarter one, hold the shift key down, click on quarter four. Release the shift key, click on the cell E8, close the parentheses and hit enter. You have to be able to put a formula in this format for the exam. It must look like this in the formula bar. Even if you get the right answer, if it doesn't look like this, it will not be marked correct. Now I'm going to copy that down. Again, when I drag it down, I need to make sure I fill without formatting so that I don't use my underline. And you can see it still copied the same. The range of worksheets stayed constant. Since I used relative referencing, the cell reference copied down. If you make a change in one of the worksheets, then it will update all of the other information. So if we went over to quarter two, and we chose C9 and said that was really supposed to be 425. Notice it changes 1675 here. When we come to the summary, it has changed it there. And it has also updated our 3D reference. So all of these formulas would be updated automatically as the data changes. So at this point we're going to go ahead and save our workbook and when we return for the next segment of our videos we will be looking at using grouping to format our workbook for printing.